Cyclone threat increasing in the Bay of Bengal and for the Philippines on today's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for May 23rd. Whilst we still don't have any new tropical cyclones yet, two of them are tantalizingly close to becoming cyclones in the Bay of Bengal and off the coast of the Philippines. And as such, we're quite concerned, code orange for the Bay of Bengal, as this system is likely to become a powerful cyclone as it uh, marches towards the coast of India and Bangladesh later in the week, into the weekend. It's nine days until Atlantic hurricane season and there's still no areas of interest to track right now, although still keep an eye on that little disturbance that's moved north of Hispaniola. We've also got more severe weather across the United States. In the eastern Pacific, it's day nine of hurricane season, and uh, we've just got a few little thunderstorms, although one of them on the left-hand side there looking quite decent. That's the left-hand side of the eastern part of the East Pacific, if that makes any sense. Uh, but quite a few little systems from what we've been tracking over the last few days. Nothing notable, though. So 90% chance for this area of interest that's just past Palau and moving towards the coast of the Philippines, likely to become a tropical cyclone very soon. Uh, it's just waiting for a better, uh, more amount of convection over the center right now. And in the Bay of Bengal, 90% for this area of interest as well. It has got the acquired winds of 40 miles per hour at least. It's got good convection, uh, but the circulation still needs a little bit more tightening, especially on the northern side, before we can go ahead and call this a tropical storm. And in the southwest Indian Ocean, there is still actually clouds associated with Ayali's remnants uh, affecting the coast of Kenya and possibly even into Somalia right now. Uh, so uh, the, uh, the rest of the Indian Ocean is looking generally calm. So our feature today is the Invest 99B and it's currently 622 kilometers southeast of Visakhapatnam, 643 from Shrikakulam, 670 from the Andaman Islands, 752 from Puri and 1070 from Kolkata. The system expected to curve northeastwards and then wrap towards the northwest. Uh, still, we're not fully sure about where the potential landfall would be, but suffice to say, the uh, whole area there, from possibly even Andhra Pradesh up northwards to Bangladesh, is watching out for potential hurricane impacts. So here's how it looks on satellite imagery right now and another mention to that system on the left hand side of India as well to the west. Um, a little bit of rotation going on in that one but on the right is the Bay of Bengal system which is looking so much better today. Uh, convection uh, not perfect uh, but still a decent amount there. It had a big burst earlier on in the day uh, but the circulation underneath that uh, appears to be getting better and certainly its uh, shape and structure is looking pretty good. The winds are there. We're just waiting for a little bit better tighter rotation and maybe a bit more convection towards the northern side uh, before we call this a storm. But I expect that we're going to see some significant intensification, rapid at times, over the next couple of days. This will be a rapidly evolving situation. It is expected to make landfall possibly as early as Saturday, but definitely by Sunday. Here's some more views of that system right now. It certainly looked much better earlier. Uh, convection, we're just waiting for a new burst, I would imagine. I expect we'll see that a little bit later on. Uh, but right now, it's a really good looking invest and the chances of tropical storm impacts are definitely elevated all along the coast. Landfall location, we're not fully sure, but the best guess right now would be possibly Eastern Odisha or West Bengal. And there's some uh, rain uh, samples from that system as well there. Now this is the Western Pacific storm which is also looking better and it's got a very uh, wide uh, or very broad rotation around the whole thing there. It's a very broad system. There's not too much rain in it right now, a few bursts of convection here and there, uh, but the center of it appears quite clear. It's to the west of Palau right now and it's moving northwestwards uh, towards, if it keeps going in that direction, it would pass very close to Samar in the Philippines. Um, and we expect the tropical storm conditions will be felt along there and possibly the highest rainfall from this system as well would be concentrated on Samar and Catanduanes and then we expect it will turn north and northeast and strengthen quite a bit more but we expect that the strongest winds along the coast of the philippines will probably be around the 50 mile per hour range 80 kilometers per hour 
run satellite imagery there very bare on the southern side the convection is mainly on that northern side but I think we're going to see significant improvement over the next 24 to 48 hours as this system continues to push northwestwards uh, convective uh, tops there getting into the minus 70s in a few areas but they are pretty small Here's a look at what's going on in Texas and neighboring states. There's some storms blowing up right now, some big uh, towers of convection. We have an enhanced risk later on today further north in the plains, uh, but a big burst of convection there really uh, standing out over the United States. Now this is the Caribbean uh, where you can see that little uh, ghostly figure of a uh, system that's pushing through Hispaniola it's just gone beyond there now and this is the eastern Atlantic off the coast of Africa looking pretty calm although there is a little uh, system moving off the coast there possibly a new wave and this is the western Pacific uh, the eastern Pacific uh, looking at these systems here the one on the left really looks pretty good it has to be said although I was looking at ASCAP earlier and it showed nothing obvious Sea surface temperatures right now are looking good in the eastern Pacific, pushing above 30 degrees Celsius towards 32 degrees even in a few spots, particularly in the uh, Gulf of Tehuantepec. Uh, looking towards the North Atlantic, uh, temperatures are getting much more favorable there as well, particularly in the Western Caribbean, but also a secondary spot there near the Leeward Islands. Uh, Gulf of Mexico almost filling out fully with 26 degrees Celsius waters now, and the Gulf Stream extending almost as far as uh, uh, Cape Hatteras. Now this is the uh, Western Pacific looking very good here as well in the uh, Philippine Sea where that system is right now. It's 30 to 31 degrees Celsius, even warmer in the South China Sea and boiling hot in the uh, Bay of Bengal where one or two areas could be seeing temperatures pushing close to 33 degrees Celsius ahead of this invest which will be cooling down those temperatures with all that cloud cover but it's certainly got massive temperatures to deal with right now. And the southwest Indian Ocean uh, looking at cooler waters in general, but there's still a few hot areas right now, particularly close to the equator. Australian region losing its venom as well in terms of the sea surface temperatures, uh, heat uh, off the coast there, still a few spots up to 29 degrees Celsius. And in the South Pacific, it's uh, pretty similar situations to what we've been seeing for quite a while. Temperatures gradually receding. It's uh, a pretty, uh, a very gradual thing as we get into the uh, winter months. Compared to average, it looks like this. The Atlantic has some big areas that are above average there, and the uh, subtropical cool zone is really uh, tightening up now and uh, being sectioned off. Eastern Pacific looking decent as well off Mexico. Western Pacific is generally a little bit above average, but especially in the South China Sea. And then you've got the Bay of Bengal really standing out there, at least four degrees above average off the coast of Myanmar and Bangladesh. Uh, so really setting the stage up there for something pretty big, possibly. Oceanic heat content looks like this. Eastern Pacific getting a little bit better there. Western Pacific is really doing well, especially off the east coast of the Philippines towards Guam, the Philippine Sea in general. That system will be taking advantage of that, all of that heat. And in the uh, Atlantic, uh, once again, we've got that channel from uh, Jamaica, south of Jamaica, through the western tip of Cuba and into the Gulf of Mexico, and another hot spot south of uh, Puerto Rico, and warming up generally off the coast, or off the uh, Lesser Antilles. So let's check the GFS computer model for the next five days and it still is projecting a powerful cyclone, uh, certainly by the looks of things a category 2, maybe category 3 on that forecast but as you can see it's taken it further west than what we were looking at on yesterday's bulletin and previous ones which were sending it into Kolkata, well now it looks like it's going to be closer to Puri uh, and then moving inland uh, into the northwest there and stalling actually and then possibly moving north eastwards after that so whether that happens or not we're not sure but that's what the trend is starting to show more and this is the western pacific obviously that system's trended west as well you know actually making landfall on samar and then moving through uh, the rest of the island and then into the southeastern tip of luzon and catanduanes and then moving off towards the north strengthening as it goes there that's a tropical storm landfall um, or multiple landfalls and then as it leaves the islands it really ramps up typhoon status by day four i think that was and then off to the northeast and becoming a powerful probably category three looking at rainfall expectations for both of these storms right now you will note that there is massive monsoonal energy off to the east of the uh, invest in the bay of bengal and it's expected to produce 
huge amounts of rainfall, uh, extending above 1,000 millimeters in some areas along the coast of southern Myanmar. That's the biggest concern right now, indicating there 48 inches, that's 1,200 millimeters of rain, uh, extending possibly into Thailand. Where the storms are, though, up to 20 inches for wherever 99B makes landfall, that's 500 millimeters. And we're looking at maybe 12 or 13 inches for parts of the Philippines, especially uh, Catanduanes and the Bicol region, uh, which is 300 millimeters. Now, the, here is the storm again moving off towards the northeast in the longer range. You saw it sweeping past the coast of Japan there. It shouldn't cause too much harm to that region. Uh, yep, it passes quite a, a way out. It'll be some of those outlying islands. And then off it goes over the North Pacific. Its remnants eventually turn into an extratropical cyclone headed for the Pacific Northwest. Uh, so there we have it. Scan the barcode and that will take you through to the Force 13 merch store where you can take a look at all our items as well as our full season and individual storm animations on request. And it's still there. I'm still waiting for Hone t-shirts. I'm getting pessimistic already whether we'll get one this year with that storm. In the silly range, all of that clears out the way. And I tell you what, here is yet another surprise, possibly, for the Southwest Indian Ocean. Could it be? We're into June by this point, and not just the first day of June, but the 5th and 6th and 7th of June. There it is. It's going to the cyclone's favourite place at this time, uh, by the looks of things. A third system possibly affecting the Seychelles, then moving off towards the northwest. Could it happen? Yes. Will it happen? Still extremely uncertain and at this point unlikely. On this day a completely different beast back in 2001 it was the Arabian Sea that woke up and really ramped up with this first out the blocks category 4 uh, off the coast of uh, western India it was eventually moving northwards it weakened quite a bit before reaching the Gujarat region uh, but it was the 23rd and 24th that it was uh, really looking very good this cyclone it peaked early on the 24th uh, peaking as a 130 mile per hour category 4 and it certainly looks the part Well, would you believe, considering that we've still not had a tropical cyclone yet, it's now the latest start to the Northern Hemisphere in 146 years. In 1878, the first storm in the Northern Hemisphere only formed on May 31st. But back to today, the first name on the Atlantic naming list is Alberto. In the Eastern Pacific, it's Aleta. And in the Central Pacific, it's still Hone. In the West Pack, Oinyar is next up. In the North Indian Ocean, it's Rimal. We should be seeing both of those, really, shouldn't we? Uh, tropical Depression was declared by the JMA, but we're still not fully sure on that just yet. Uh, not quite as satisfied over here. In the Australian region, the next name is Robin. The Southwest Indian Ocean is Jeremy. Could we see it? And in the South Pacific, next up is Pitta. That's all from today's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow. Become an ultimate fan today.